New York. And I'm saying good evening uh, uh, to Peter, who's in London today. Um, and uh, he's joining us uh, to talk about probably one of the hottest topics uh, in the universe today, which is the world of uh, cryptocurrencies and high net worth uh, cryptocurrencies and blockchain. Uh, we've held a conference uh, just last week. Um, I believe we had uh, close to 600 families attending and some of the spaces, prominent names like the head of um, blockchain at Microsoft and HP and Libra and uh, uh, um, um, who else? Uh, Antonio Diorio, the co-founder of Ethereum. Uh, and it was brilliant. And um, we're doing another session. And Bloomberg were there. We're doing another session on March 3rd. So obviously this is a very, very uh, hot topic these days. A um, couple of words about uh, my uh, guest today. Um, so Peter is Arrow Capital's chief executive officer responsible for the strategic direction of the firm, as well as integrating a rigorous economic thinking into the asset allocation process. After successfully trading cryptocurrencies on his personal account, Peter co-founded Arrow Capital to help give investors access to the growing opportunities presented by DLT and crypto assets. We'll talk about what that is all about in a second. He previously worked uh, uh, at competition economics consultancy, RBB Economics, advising on multi-billion dollar global M&A deals and draws on this background to provide a traditional competition and industrial economics framework to DLT and crypto assets. Peter holds uh, um, uh, an uh, MSc in economics from the University of Southampton. And yeah, hi Peter, how are you doing? Hi Danny, I'm good, thanks, and you? Thank you, thank you so much, and it's uh, brilliant. Uh, we've had a couple of discussions before. Uh, it's really uh, nice having you with us today. Uh, maybe, um, uh, we can start by, uh, I, I, I mentioned briefly what you've been doing, uh, how you ended up here, but uh, if you can tell in your own words a little bit more about yourself and how you ended up doing what you do. Sure, yeah. So my name is Peter Havermack and I am delighted to be the Chief Executive of our Capital. Um, and as said, um, before crypto, I was very much in competition, economic consulting and advising a lot around the competition concerns of large M&A deals. And this was across all jurisdictions and all industries, so very, very broad, uh, but again, specialised at the same time. And I draw upon this background to provide a traditional approach in terms of competition and industrial economics and use that to analyse DLT, which is what makes one of our approaches so unique is uh, using established frameworks. So I and the other co-founders of our capital entered the space in, back in 2017, looking to invest their own money. After exploring the opportunity set and the economics behind this technology and this asset class, we spent over two years building a professional way to invest our own money and the money of our network, which would very much give us the level of confidence that we required for our own investments. And just given how different this market is, we had to build a ground up approach from first principles, exploring how best to exploit this opportunity set. I have to say that, you know, in our, uh, in our blockchain conferences, which are nothing to do with the, block, with the blockchain conferences you, you probably know of, uh, definitely not those that were going on in 2018, we bring the perspective of the family offices. We always bring, uh, do a family office panel. And, uh, um, and one of the things we're seeing that is very interesting is, um, you know, when we're dealing with thousands of families a year, every thousand families you see one family that does amazingly well for himself and we're always thinking you know this this could be a great opportunity to co-invest with somebody to tag along with somebody who's been doing very very well and knows what he's doing uh, and it's a different mindset and position than just another vc when you've been doing it for your own and uh and you're using those uh, uh talents so um it's definitely interesting that you took it from there uh, to uh, now leveraging it to, uh, to something larger. Um, so obviously blockchain and cryptocurrencies are probably the second 
hottest topic. Unfortunately for us all, the first mm-hmm. one is COVID. So maybe just beco- before we'll start our discussion, briefly, you know, we're using uh, the, uh, the, uh, the advantage of speaking to families from all around the world to learn about the situation where they are at. And uh, uh, London's been, you know, having a tough time. How is it going in London? Yeah, unfortunately, we've been come to be known as um, the kind of sick island of the world. Um, there's quite stringent lockdowns here um, since just after Christmas, and it's going to be until at least the 8th of March. Um, but luckily, us and the team have been working remotely and been able to make the best of the unfortunate times. Got it. Thank you. So okay, let's start our discussion. So basically... Uh, uh, crypto assets have been going uh, through the roof, at least uh, the, the basic coins. Um, we've seen uh, Bitcoin at, in early December at 20K. Um, we've seen, um, then it jumped to 40K in a month, uh, which is crazy. Now it's around 32K. Ethereum was hanging around to 200, 300 for a while. Uh, briefly touched 700, which I believe was the height in 2018. And now it's at 1300. Um, so I guess my question, and, and another thing, so I've, I basically will make it two questions. One is where do you think the market's going? Uh, we've seen JP and Credit Suisse, I believe, giving the Bitcoin crazy rates of $150,000 by the end of the year, which is crazy. Um, uh, I wonder what, how you see it. And uh, Maybe another question I will add is that my feeling is that, you know, in 2018, those that supported the, the, those rates were the masses, uh, unprofessional people that were in a cult-like, uh, you know, activities, investing in things they don't understand, falling for stupid ICOs, while now the market is being led by sophisticated investors, professional, more professional investors. You see the institutionals getting in, you see, uh, PayPal is now opening to, um, so things are happening that are, um, that are, you know, I think the, the money is way more sophisticated now, which is a great thing. Um, so I wanted your thoughts on where the market's going and would you agree that now it's been uh, uh, led by more professional institutional capital and would you think you would see the masses again, driving it even further? Sure, yeah, so yeah, where the market's going, that's the $64 billion question. I'm going to give a multi-layered answer as there's more to this than just crypto to talk about. So starting with cryptocurrencies in uh, 2021, we expect the crypto market to do extremely well. Moving elsewhere into the wider story, over the next couple of years, we expect enterprise DLT to become a standard technology across many sectors with a proliferation of use cases. In the long term, we expect public blockchains like Ethereum or successor platforms. Once permissionless blockchain technology has developed and overcome its current limitations, to become the dominant technology used by businesses, resulting in a very large price appreciation of cryptocurrencies over the long term. For example, the OCC in the US has already given the green light for financial institutions to use public blockchains and stable coins for settlement of digital payments. So coming back to the short term, our analysis suggests that we're currently about halfway through the current crypto market bull cycle. We range, we monitor a range of crypto drivers, crypto market drivers to enable us to rotate between aggressive and conservative strategies capture all the upside in bull markets and to protect in bear markets. Our proprietary market indicators have been very effective at measuring market health, predicting the future direction of the market, as well as predicting market tops over previous um, crypto market cycles. The current crypto market volatility is unsurprising um, over the past couple of weeks, given the very strong market performance over the past few months and corrections of this magnitude have been very common in previous crypto bull markets. But our indicators remain bullish still and um, suggest that we are still well below bubble territory. And so we expect the crypto bull market to continue upwards in the short term, well, shortly. And 
funny question on the top two investors. Yes, we kind of very much have seen um, the types of people um, involved in this market being very different to what drove the bull market in 2017. And this has very much been reflected in how the market has acted as well. There's been a lot of pickup in institutional interest um, from hedge funds to asset managers. Um, and especially US institutions have um, very much uh, strongly been buying Bitcoin and um, intend to hold them as long-term reserves. And uh, can you explain just what DLTs are? You know, for all of us know what cryptocurrencies, maybe some of us don't know the term. I'm not familiar. Sure, yeah. So DLT or distributed ledger technology is an umbrella term for technology that includes blockchain. So blockchain is the most common form of distributed ledger technology or DLT. But there are other promising technologies, um, competing technologies with blockchain that um, have promise in the long term. Got it. Um, so, um, uh, going back to COVID, what do you, how, how does COVID affected the market? I mean, from my perspective, the unprofessional one, I, um, as somebody who's not in the market, it seems to me like COVID actually helped um, uh, cryptocurrencies as a more stable, uh, trustworthy um, uh, uh, asset, and people have maybe more attention and are liquid and want to look at interesting investments and uh, looking more into blockchain um, related companies as well. Uh, how, how do you see in general the, the, the effects of COVID on, on this case? There have been a number of effects here. On the DLT side, um, companies have actually cut non essential IT spending in 2020 as the economy ground to halt. So our capitals estimates that DLT related spending has been temporarily depressed by around a third in 2020 relative to what it otherwise would have been. However, we expect a very strong recovery uh, and that growth in DOT spending will be significantly higher going forwards than it otherwise would have been uh, as it makes up the lost ground. And this gives investors a great opportunity to get in front of these developments. Obviously, as you said, on the crypto side, um, government and central bank responses to the pandemic have almost certainly had a positive impact on the crypto markets. First, the large-scale money printing by central banks and um, disruption of supply chains and mobility have increased fears of inflation, causing investors to look for inflation hinges and alternatives to fiat currency. Second, the growth in Digitalization in all spheres has made the idea of crypto and DLT more accessible, especially for investors. Um, and can you tell us uh, now a little bit more about the firm, the team, what you guys are up to? Sure, yeah. So our capital opens up the exciting and rapidly evolving DLT and crypto asset growth story for professional investors via a fully regulated EU domicile fund of funds. Our experienced team combines economic and empirical analysis with established industry and investment practices to select the best in class active managers while prioritizing effective downside risk protection. We have put together what is to our knowledge, one of the first genuinely institutional quality fund of funds offerings in this space. Our capital team combines younger investors such as me and the CIO, Ankish Yan, with our direct experience in crypto investments, with senior practitioners from the hedge fund industry, such as Peter Rigg, the former CEO of HSBC Alternative Investments, alongside other well-known names in the alternatives industry. Our goal is to offer broad exposure to the long-term growth of DLT and crypto assets whilst protecting against the market short-term volatility. We have achieved this by investing across a range of different funds with different investment strategies, an approach that provides a strong source of diversification in these fast-moving markets. We have opened up the sectors and the companies 
best place to generate super profits as a result of DLT and crypto assets. With crypto assets, the strategy takes advantage of the large market inefficiencies to enhance the or the tremendous return potential of this rapidly growing asset class. Um, and um, what's your strategy really? What, what are you bringing to the game that's uh, other than, of course, your ability that you've proved uh, as, a, as a private investor to choose the right uh, strategies? Um, uh, what, what's, what is the edge here? What, what is your strategies, aims, objectives? How do you, uh, uh, um, um, what do you invest in how? Oh yeah. And maybe um, also, uh, I, don't, I don't think uh, we uh, asked you, uh, how does one invest with you? Uh, what's the minimum investment? How would that work like? Sure, yeah. So uh, we take um, non-US investors, the minimum ticket size is $150,000. And it's for professional investors or um, the equivalent in relevant, uh, for the equivalent investor classification in relevant jurisdictions. Um, so firstly, the disclaimer for everyone to quickly refer back to. Um, so from our understanding of the full breadth of the DLT and the crypto asset investment landscape, we have identified five key investment aims which we believe are key to exploiting this very broad opportunity set in a risk managed and dependable way. The overall investment objective is to achieve double digit annualized returns in a diversified and risk controlled way. And this involves gaining exposure to the long term economic value creation of DLT and crypto assets, which can be enhanced by capitalizing on short term market inefficiencies through arbitrage and tactical trading strategies. It is also important to capture strategic opportunities that, as different industries develop and implement um, blockchain and DLT applications. And finally, we, this can all be brought together in a professional portfolio using established risk management frameworks to protect against the high volatility of this asset class. You have more going from the presentation or we can go to my next question? Yeah, next question. So uh, a little bit, uh, we, uh, you mentioned a little bit about uh, DLT. Uh, so some background on DLT and crypto assets uh, and the broad opportunity uh, that you're exploiting. Sure, yeah. So as I explained um, earlier, DLT or distributed ledger technologies an umbrella term for database infrastructure, which includes blockchain. Crypto assets include cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin, as well as other forms of tokens stored on distributed ledgers. While DLT is the economic, or DLT is the technological innovation, crypto assets are the economic innovation, and they very much go hand in hand. This space covers a multitude of different strategies, assets, and even technologies. DLT is a key technology which will enable Industrial Revolution 4.0 and its use cases are very much intertwined with technologies such as Internet of Things, Big Data, big data and AI. RO gains access to the sectors and the companies best place to generate super profits as a result of DLT. The crypto assets we take advantage of the large market inefficiencies to enhance the order tremendous return potential of this asset class. And we also take advantage of the very low correlations to other asset classes. And um, um, what's the most significant uh, developments uh, in this space and what makes it so compelling? So DLT is a rapidly evolving and growing investment landscape. Over $13 billion was invested in 2019, up from just $2 billion in 2016. Cumulatively, between 2015 and 2019, more than $47 billion has been invested. Comprehensive figures are not yet available for 2020, but 
we see evidence of this continued trend in areas such as decentralized finance. Decentralized finance is what many believe is the next stage of evolution of fintech and neobanks, cutting costs further and increasing trust in the financial sector by entirely replacing some financial intermediaries with smart contracts. Top VCs including Anderson Horowitz, Unison Square Ventures, Sequoia Capital and Draper Associates are investing heavily into this space. McKinsey have identified over 80 use cases across 14 different industries where DLT will have an impact ranging from finance to healthcare to fine art. According to Gardner Research, blockchain technology will deliver an estimated $3.1 trillion in value by 2030, while Peter Rizzi has a more conservative figure of just over $2 trillion. Either way, the numbers and implications of this technology are tremendous. And our capital is right at the heart of this head of the vast majority of investors. Well-known industry names are embracing this technology. What makes the DLT growth story so powerful is the clear economic value that can be generated through its adoption. For example, HSBC has put 10 billion of private placements on the blockchain, the platform known as Digital Vault gives investors real-time access to the records of securities bought in private markets. And this has digitalized the paper-based records of private placements. HSBC has also been settling hundreds of billions dollars worth of internal FX trades on the blockchain, cutting trading costs by 25%. IBM help business in integrate blockchain into their supply chains. IBM offers a full suite of blockchain-based solutions from design to operations. For example, IBM has partnered with Merck to build the blockchain trade platform TradeLens to track shipping containers. The network now covers more than 60% of global shipping volumes. Further, Thailand's central bank recently issued a 1.6 billion government bond on the IBM blockchain. IAG have launched their blockchain-based trade finance platform Contour to simplify letters of credit, reducing the amount of time needed to process them from five to 10 days to under 24 hours. Contour has now expanded to 21 banks from its initial eight founding members. IAG have also invested in the securities lending platform HQLA, which uses blockchain to facilitate efficient and high-speed trading for high-quality liquid assets. And Walmart has also teamed up with IBM to infuse blockchain into its food supply chains. Walmart can now trace the origin of over 25 products from five different suppliers using blockchain. The company is now rolling the system out over more products and categories. Using the IBM Food Trust Network, Walmart have shown that they can track food item from store back to source in seconds, compared to days or sometimes even weeks previously. Many top tier institutions have already entered the crypto asset markets. Tudor has invested, for example, 2% of its assets in Bitcoin as an inflation hedge in the current money printing environment. Two Sigma and Renaissance's infamous medallion funds are actively trading crypto assets. Brevin Howard's crypto arm, Elwood's Asset Management, has been actively investing in crypto venture funds. Anderson Horowitz has raised over 500 million for second blockchain VC funds. Invesco has partnered with Elwood to launch a highly successful blockchain ETF. Fidelity has given the green light for crypto and it is now expanding the services offered by its digital assets business. DBS has recently launched a crypto exchange for its clients. The IO, the textbook leader in alternative finance and investing, has invested in blockchain VC funds and many other Ivy League colleges have followed suit. And Mass Mutual, the large life insurance company, recently purchased over $100 million in Bitcoin and put it into uh, cold storage as a long term holding. 
Nearly 80% of institutional investors now find something appealing about crypto assets. The top three reasons for interest, according to Fidelity, is that one, they are uncorrelated to other asset classes. Two, they are an innovative technology play. And three, they're high potential upsides. Whilst not recovered in this survey, institutions in Asia Pacific are generally most valuable towards crypto assets. We're having some questions here. Uh, first of all, my, my next question was why invest in DLT and crypto assets? I think you answered that. Um, yeah, I've got some more slides on that. Okay, and then I'll ask you a couple of questions from the audience, but uh, please. Sure, yeah. Um, so first and foremost, from an economist perspective, DLT and crypto assets offers an attractive long-term growth opportunity. This is at a time when there is increased uncertainty amongst other asset classes, which have become detached from economic fundamentals and driven by expansionary monetary policy. Second, this technology has the potential to disrupt virtually every industry and has applications throughout many different value chains. This asset class has also been the highest returning and fastest growing asset class both on an absolute and visual justice basis. And we believe there's still a long way to go. In spite of their volatility, crypto assets offers a superior risk of justice return when compared to other asset classes. The shot ratio of crypto assets over the past five years has been far above those of other asset classes. Crypto assets are also uncorrelated to other asset classes with correlations of close to zero across the board. Further, due to further, a working paper co-authored by one of our economic advisors, Dr. Daniel Lubanacci of Queen Mary University of London, suggests that crypto assets are even independent from the underlying risk factors that drive other asset classes. This makes crypto assets a great portfolio diversifier. Governments, banks, and other large corporations are starting to get behind both DLT and crypto assets. Many established companies ranging from Facebook to Amazon to PayPal are now involved. And finally, established investment and operational risk management practices can be applied successfully to this asset class. This market is maturing and becoming more professional. There are plenty of signs that is now moving beyond the world west, so there is still work to be done. Um, just a couple of questions before we continue. Uh, some folks are asking. One is asking, uh, I heard you say that uh, uh, non-US investors uh, are the only ones who can invest with you. Is there no way that US investors can still get engaged with you? Um, so we'll um, set up a a U.S. domiciled vehicle when we have um, sufficient interest from U.S. investors. If there are U.S. investors that um, are interested um, in us, then um, we would uh, obviously be uh, happy to engage with them and I see gauge a level of interest in the market. That's great. So if, if there is interest, we will find a way to make it work. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, um, and uh, I see someone else asked me if this is going to be online. Uh, yeah, so this will be online. I don't have a link for you now because this is just happening. Uh, but uh, it will be online, I, I believe, by tomorrow. And everybody who are here will get a link. Uh, so you will be able to watch this uh, recorded version. Um, just a couple of more questions before we'll continue. Everyone talks uh, DLT, but how widely is it uh, uh, being used at present, do you have examples some of some well-known companies using it? I think uh, we, we, we mentioned that as well, uh, but uh, that's another question here. Yeah, um, so yeah, we gave kind of a number of examples of, um, for example, Walmart using it for its um, supply chains um, to track um, its products um, quickly and efficiently relative to what it was previously using as a paper-based process. It has been particularly popular in um, trade finance um, and sim simplifying letters of credit. Um, we gave an example, but there are many other kind of large finance companies and we know kind of many people in our network who are building um, 
many of these different uh, blockchain based platforms, especially around um, trade finance and other or kind of um, syndicate markets in insurance as well is a popular use case in that is currently being used now. Um, okay, another question I'm seeing here is how, how do you invest in blockchain? Bitcoin is obvious, but blockchain is less obvious. Is the best way to have a basket of companies that uh, uh, per plays on block gains, like small cap publish um, uh, tech companies? or established companies that have uh, many key uh, processes like HSBC? Yeah, so we'll be covering this um, okay. um, kind of a bit later on, but there are many ways of doing this. Okay, so let, uh, I, we have more questions. We'll get back to it in a second because some of them might be answered uh, at the questions I have here. Um, so uh, what is the impact on having an exposure to DLT and crypto assets for the investors? Sure, yeah. So on this slide, we show the impact of investing specifically in crypto funds relative to a passive crypto market benchmark. On the first two rows of the table, we see the performance of the crypto market index relative to the crypto funds index. The annualized return of the crypto funds index is about 13% higher than that of the crypto market with only 60% of the volatility. This results in the fund crypto funds index having sharp and sort of ratios, which are double that of the crypto market, and also a far smaller maximum drawdown. Moreover, this slide shows that investing in crypto funds can have a positive impact on a portfolio. On the third row of the table, we show the base portfolio, which comprises of 40% corporate bonds. 40% equities, 10% alternatives, and 10% cash. On the final row of the table, we show the effect of having a 5% allocation to the crypto funds index. We see that an allocation of the crypto funds index more than doubles the annualized return of the base portfolio from just over 4% to almost 9%. The annualized portfolio volatility also increases slightly from 8.5% to 9.3%, but Due to the increased portfolio return, the sharp and sorted ratios both double. Further, the maximal drawdown decreases slightly when the crypto funds index is added to the base portfolio. Overall, this analysis shows that crypto funds can be an appropriate investment for risk conscious investors. Um, what's the best approach to gain exposure to the growth story? Sure. So I want to first start off with the infamous quote from Harry Markowitz. Diversification is the only free lunch in finance. Whether you believe in this school of thought or not, we ourselves believe that in a space as diffuse and diverse as this one, there are meaningful portfolio diversification benefits. But while entering a new asset class can bring portfolio benefits, it also presents potential challenges and every asset class is distinct from others. And so investment strategies and philosophy need to be tailored. The DLT and crypto asset class is novel and therefore requires a bespoke investment approach. There are many ways to access the DLT and crypto asset growth story for professional investors, but the real challenge is being able to gain exposure in a risk managed and dependable way. We are therefore arguably at the same stage of market development as hedge funds were in the 1990s. Rather like then, investors who are less familiar with this new asset class would do well to seek guidance from those with the necessary expertise or alternatively go for a fund of funds approach. So on the DLT side, we can, one can get venture capital exposure of our direct investments into projects and companies. The key hurdle of this approach is access, where the best VC deal done, best VC deals are done behind closed doors between the top VC firms with the best networks. One can get access to these exclusive deals by instead investing in the top VC funds themselves. However, they themselves are hard to access with high minimum investments 
eight to 12 year lockups and are often oversubscribed. There is also the blockchain ETF approach of investing in public companies, best place to profit from this technology. This chart illustrates that exposure to a blockchain ETF can be impure and heavily correlated to US tech stocks, so provides limited portfolio diversification. For example, this transformational data sharing ETF typically has around a 90% correlation to the NASDAQ 100 index. On the crypto side of things, there are direct investments into crypto assets which are becoming increasingly accessible. However, successful direct investment is complex, requires time, resources and expertise. For this reason, the cost benefit ratio of an initial allocation by this route can be high. Further, there are operation considerations around the safe transfer and storage of these bearer assets. A simpler route, a simpler investment route are Bitcoin funds. However, you are only gaining exposure to one asset. The working paper co-authored by one of our economic advisors suggests that there are diversification benefits from investing in a larger range of crypto assets beyond just Bitcoin. Further, fees are high given that they are single asset funds and they commonly trade at large premiums to the underlying NAV. An example of a Bitcoin fund, uh, and this is an example, is by far the largest passive crypto fund, which has been very successful. Um, this approach contains its pitfalls, which our diversified approach is designed to avoid. This chart illustrates the persistence and the size of the fund premium of this NAV, which is a pitfall of this route into the crypto space. Then there are index funds, which can provide wider uh, market exposure to other crypto assets. However, diversification is still often limited given the market dominance of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other large cap crypto assets. For example, the Bitcoin 10 index is more than 90% Bitcoin and Ethereum. Passive indexes are also very volatile and can be even more volatile than Bitcoin. For example, the CCR 30 index, which is much more diversified, lost almost 90% of its value in 2018. They are so volatile precisely because they diversify away from the top crypto assets which have the lowest volatility. Finally, there are actively managed crypto funds. Every investment strategy available within the realms of traditional finance from market neutral arbitrage to long short trading to VC to fixed income also operate within this new asset class. The opportunities, the challenges and the risks of these strategies are however distinct in many ways from their cousins in traditional finance. Also, given the dispersion in the quality of crypto funds, they require thorough due diligence. There are a number of key considerations when investing in crypto funds. In an early stage market, such as this one, information asymmetries create significant opportunities for knowledgeable investors in the form of inefficient markets. The potential for outsized risk-adjusted returns from effective active management is an order of magnitude larger than in traditional asset classes. We see this when comparing the performance of crypto funds relative to passive benchmarks. Our economic advisor, Dr. Daniel Bonacci, has co-authored a working paper on the performance of crypto funds. The crypto funds index in this chart includes all investment strategies, including market neutral and other conservative strategies which target low double-digit annualized return. And even in the bull market conditions of 2020 and into this year, this blended mix of crypto strategies has delivered competitive risk-adjusted returns. The average monthly return of Bitcoin over the study period is 7% versus 7.5% of crypto funds, while their monthly volatility is 20% lower. The best strategies based on diversified allocation have been even better. However, there is a large dispersion in the performance of these crypto managers. Uh, as the paper on crypto funds found, only a small minority of funds can outperform passive benchmarks and produce large and economically significant alphas. 
There is also a large dispersion in the risk adjusted returns of managers with no clear relationship between risk and return. Importantly for active investors, this paper also suggests that manager relative performance is persistent over time. Crypto manager performance is not mean reverting. And so we are convinced that effective manager selection is essential to achieving superior performance. There are three key advantages to a fund of funds approach to the DLT and crypto asset growth story. First, they provide access and broad exposure to the expertise of active managers specializing in different areas of this diverse opportunity set. Also, the aggregation of capital enables high minimum investments of the top funds to be met and allows negotiations of better terms and fees. Second, will follow diversification across asset class, style, strategy, and fund structure can provide an effective balance between risk and rewards. Diversification uh, reduces counterpart risk across multiple managers, exchanges, and custodians, and other service providers. The third key advantage is expertise. The sector demands a high level of professional and operational due diligence to assess manager risks and select the best funds. Specialist knowledge also gives access to managers that operate in closed networks. As previously mentioned, there is a very broad and diverse opportunity set in the DLT and crypto assets growth story. We split the strategy landscape into four macro buckets based on the return profiles of different investment strategies. These buckets are market neutral, long short, opportunistic and long term. The market neutral strategy bucket is predominantly quantitative arbitrage. However, there are also good longer term arbitrage opportunities such as lending crypto assets to exchange traded products, which typically trade at a premium to their underlying assets. The long short strategy bucket is also predominantly quantitative strategies alongside fundamental long short managers who trade over long term, longer time periods with managed market directionality. Opportunistic strategies is an interesting strategy bucket with strategy returns, which are largely idiosyncratic to the market, creating large diversification benefits. The long-term strategy bucket is made up of long-term thesis-driven strategies, such as thesis-driven crypto hedge funds, venture capital and private equity. This bucket includes funds which are buying shares of public companies expected to generate and sustain higher profits from this technology. We believe that our ability to identify the less obvious long-term opportunity set and the shorter term opportunities, which in any case receive most of the publicity, a significant part of our capital edge. Because we have recognized the opportunity set, we have found the best ways to exploit it. And in doing this, we have succeeded in getting in front of the, these developments well ahead of the vast majority of other investors. Our investment landscape covers the full opportunity set, everything from two page white papers for initial coin offerings to arbitrage hedge funds to mutual funds buying the stocks of big banks who are implementing this technology. On the investment funds landscape, alongside traditional fund structures, there are hybrid funds which provide access to VC style investments through open ended hedge fund structures. The key aim of DOT and crypto is open finance, allowing great access to investment opportunities and to improve secondary markets for venture and private equity investments. It is these developments which allow for the shorter investment horizons of these hybrid funds relative to traditional VC. The investment universe also includes mutual funds with exposure to the sectors and the companies that we expect to be able to generate sustained profits from this technology and this asset class. We seek to gain exposure to two types, types of companies. The first being those best places to profit from adopting this technology and give them an edge over their competitors. The second are the picks and shovels companies who provide the technology and supporting services. And on the underlying assets, alongside crypto assets, we also gain exposure to idiosyncratic market opportunities such as mining, staking, or yield farming where Participants in Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies generate revenue from the network. 
Uh, I see we have more and more questions, but uh, uh, allow me just to um, finish uh, three more questions that I have here. Uh, investing in this space is full of pitfalls. Uh, and by the way, you mentioned uh, loaning uh, to others. I, I understand it's a very profitable area, but mm. it could be very risky uh, mm. as well. Uh, but anyway, investing in here is, has a lot of pitfalls and the market is uh, crazily volatile. I wrote very, but it's crazy. Mm -hmm. How does uh, Arrow deal with this? So one of the most important considerations for investing in crypto funds is that operational due diligence is equally as important as investment due diligence. And we undertake both investment and operational analysis side by side from the very start of the investment process. There are several key considerations behind the importance of assessing and controlling for operational risk in this space. First, the market is dominated by startup and early stage managers who are often the operationally weak. For example, less than half of crypto managers have an independent director and around 20% of managers still do not have an independent custodian. Secondly, due to the new and distinct nature of crypto assets, there are still operational risks which have not yet been fully mitigated. Two examples of these operational gaps are valuations and insurance. Firstly, valuations is an area where prices can vary significantly between different exchanges for the same crypto assets. And for custody, insurers are still working to understand where the key risks are in the custody process for crypto assets. Because this industry is dominated by weaker startup managers and early stage managers, our due diligence has identified operational shortcomings which may not have yet manifested themselves but have deterred us from investing due to the risks presented. We follow a multi layered selection process that filters opportunities using established best practices for both investment and operational due diligence adapted for specific requirements of the DLT and crypto asset space. Each part of our process is a source of competitive advantage. We have identified hundreds of funds in our investable universe, and by the time we have filtered them through the different layers of our process, we know the ones that are making into our portfolio remarkably well. In terms of risk management, it is important to have a clear focus on risk considerations at different levels from the very early stages of portfolio construction for and for um, risk at the investor level, it is essential to understand where DLT and crypto assets fit relative to other assets in the portfolio. In terms of manager risk, it is crucial to understand each manager's investment and operational risk. And we bring this all together then to manage overall DLT and crypto asset portfolio risk. At the portfolio level, it is important to be able to manage and rotate between underlying investments depending on where the risk in the market lies. We monitor a range of market drivers to enable us to actively rotate between aggressive and conservative strategies to capture the more of the upside in bull markets and protecting the bear markets. Um, Arrow has a unique investment thesis, uh, thesis in uh, economic and uh, economic approach. Can you tell us about that? In such a new and exciting space, it is easy to lose focus and get distracted by the shiny technology. Economic analysis is required to make sense of such a complex and quickly evolving investment landscape. We believe that the focus always needs to be on the fundamental economic problems being solved. From this, we identify the sectors and the use cases where the technology and the asset class will generate the most value. However, where the technology is applied differs from where the profits will be generated as a result. For example, in European markets where markets are more efficient, early movers can quickly capture large market shares, but big bank DLT consortiums will face competitive pressures to pass on related cost savings to their customers. In less efficient Asian markets, however, many incumbents applying this technology will face less competitive pressures to pass on cost savings. The final consideration is the timing of these profits. As with any technology, there are important development and adoption cycles. The adoption and implementation 
takes time and many DLT applications take years at our R&D before puppies can be realized. Development is exceptionally fast in this space. Many new innovations have relatively short windows of opportunity for high puppies, which soon get competed away as investors identify them. Further, the disruptors very quickly become the disrupted when the core technology has multiple stages of development, as is the case with DLT and crypto assets. The lucrative proper generation centers in this space quickly shift as the technology evolves with new sources of profit constantly coming online. If you have to fully take advantage of this, we need to identify the potential profit centers before the rest of the market start chasing them. And our ability to do so is a crucial source of our capital's advantage. And to just give quickly some idea of the complexity of all these moving parts, this slide shows the key points which need to be considered and the breadth of the opportunity. This is a process which is required to arrive at best managers, the ones most likely to capture the best future opportunities and importantly, at the right time and in the right way. And we have invested a lot of time in building up our economic framework to ensure robust economic support for this growth story over the long term. Alongside our four economic white papers, we have published over 40 articles on the economics and economics of DLT and crypto assets as part of our thought leadership series on our website. Um, so before we go to the, my final question, let's try, try to get to some of the questions we, we get. We have plenty. Please explain the process of your firm, uh, um, please explain the process your firm conducts KYCs and how you may be different from the US regulation. Um, so we have um, kind of a European um, administrator, Apex Fund Services, which um, are often a bit stricter in terms of KYC, AML. Um, however, due to um, current COVID conditions, they have um, relaxed and also digitized some of their process as well. When will we see uh, um, um, uh, interoperability between different DLTs, uh, shipping info in the Hyperledger and letters of credit in R3? Yeah, so um, interoperability is, has been quite a hot topic with a number of um, platforms um, and companies looking to create um, basically ledgers that act um, as an intermediary between different ones. As with any technology, it is very hard to get different IT systems to talk to each other. However, given the standardization that is enabled by DLT, we expect this process to become easier going forward uh, relative to uh, legacy systems. We're using DLT with IBM integrated into an, uh, into an uh, enterprise marketplace for global trade. We've created an internal trade finance credit. Uh, uh, okay, that's not a question, uh, it's just a remark. Uh, what do you think uh, can cryptocurrency used as a replacement to current currency system? Will it have positive impact if it does? So this is to some extent a misconception. Um, we see cryptocurrencies working alongside traditional fiat currencies as opposed to replacing them. Um, having a cryptocurrency as the base currency would be like having the gold standard back again, which as we saw in the late 19th century and early 20th century did create um, and lead to economic instability. Um, and so we very much see a combination of the two working side by side and us being able to, well, the economy being able to benefit from the benefits of each uh, while avoiding the kind of negative impacts of each, so get the best of both worlds. I'm getting two people asking if they can get a copy of your presentations later on. Uh, this one? Or... I, I, I believe. 
Yeah. Maybe, maybe what we should do is, guys, you'll get uh, Peter's contact info and then you can go directly and ask him uh, what he can or cannot uh, uh, say. Yeah. This, yeah. But uh, we have some contact info on the last stories. Yeah, I, I, we will send it also to everybody uh, that registered, including you guys will have uh, this entire session um, online as well. Um, do you too, I'm being asked as well, believe that the wealth tech, wealth management space will show new tech value added propositions and players soon? Or do you think that a real use of DLT as a service ally um, companies will be on stage, but no, but on a later stage? Um, not 100% sure, but I mean, we see definitely blockchain in the future this is possibly kind of a second generation um, use case with the first generation being um, kind of more trading and um, the letters of credit um, um, kind of based and kind of as a second generation, we definitely kind of have been looking closely at how blockchain platforms, of which are, all, or are already, of how they can make, um, for example, the description and management process of funds, um, so have essentially have funds tokenized on the blockchain, how we can make it more efficient, how we can make user um, investor KYC AML more efficient. So instead of having to send each administrator a separate lot of details, um, you upload them once and then you just give different administrators access depending on um, which funds you want to invest in or which investments you want to make. Um... We were, do you believe that the, uh, oh, we asked that already, it's twice. Uh, someone else is asking, but again, maybe not for now. Um, uh, if you can advise of blockchain, they're thinking of uh, um, getting into blockchain technology to transform their existing underlying technology. If you know of any companies or consultants that can help with that uh, to develop blockchain technology. Um, but I guess uh, this is something you can uh, discuss uh, also um, uh, um, later on or privately. And um, my, my last question, we're reaching an hour here and uh, uh, mm -hmm. the most important one for me now is to ask you, how would you summarize the case for, Aria, for Arrow's unique approach to capturing these opportunities out there in a, a sustainable way? So our approach is what we believe to be the first genuinely, one of the first genuine institution ways to invest in this exciting space and our diversified and actively managed approach supported by a strong due diligence process and our ability to get in front of the most exciting opportunities ahead of the market offers a compelling way to capture this opportunity set without taking undue risk. Firstly, DLT and crypto assets present strong return opportunities at a time when the return potential of most of the asset classes is uncertain. Second is a diversified, actively managed access to carefully researched managers. Third is our multi-stage due diligence process, which is designed specifically for this sector. Fourth, our approach involves the application of established fund management best practices. And the final point, bringing this all together, is a robust approach to risk management. Um, okay, um, another question here. Great presentation. What are the regulations uh, dealt by Arrow Capital for clients? Uh, what, sorry? They're asking what are the regulations dealt by Arrow Capital for clients? Um, it depends on the jurisdiction of the investor. Um, and obviously we have to um, comply with um, local um, jurisdiction um, regulation in terms of um, which clients we can potentially take on or not. Um, and maybe last remark I'm seeing here. Thank you for answering that question. Um, uh, not pointing to manage KYC, but to manage uh, fiduciary uh, structures. Uh, and the person that just asked about jurisdictions, which ju jurisdictions are the main focus? Um, so in our strategy, um, we are kind of jurisdiction 
agnostic. Um, we invest in funds um, from Latin America to the Far East, and also the um, the projects and the companies which our thesis driven um, hedge funds investing or um, also our public uh, equity players as well, they invest um, on a global basis. So the top jurisdictions for DLT and blockchain related projects is um, often the US, uh, UK and Singapore and also a strong crypto presence in Switzerland as well. Uh, okay, I think we're done with the questions uh, uh, from our audience at this stage. Um, anything else, Peter, uh, that you would like to add? Um, no, um, thank you very much for interviewing me. It's been um, great talking to you. Uh, another question again, if you can share this presentation. So a lot of people want yeah. to see your uh, presentation. It's, it's yeah. graphic design and stuff, but everything. So. Um, uh, I, I suggest you guys would get in touch to, uh, directly with Peter. Um, mm -hmm. You have his information right here and we will send it to you um, uh, via email um, later on tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and I, uh, it's been, it's been uh, very, very interesting. Uh, people here are excited. Somebody's writing, go Aero Capital, go DLT. So. Uh, obviously, the, the space is, is at a very unique uh, position and, um, and absolutely uh, 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 we're looking at to see what's going to happen here next. Don't forget our blockchain uh, conference will be, uh, the second part will be held on March 3rd. So uh, you guys would be able to get more perspectives. Um, so thank you, Peter, so much for being here with us today. Uh, we'll send all the information later on. Uh, people loved your presentation, just so you know. Uh, I don't know, Peter, if you follow the uh, Q&A, uh, but people uh, uh, love the session. So um, thanks a lot, Peter. Um, we will uh, keep everybody, uh, uh, um, uh, we'll send everybody your contact information. And I hope to see you soon at one of our events, hopefully in person and in London. We are waiting for, uh, to see what's going on there to do our London conference that we've been doing for seven, eight years now. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you everybody for joining us. And uh, I will see you guys next week. Uh, we have uh, uh, a couple of interesting sessions coming uh, next week. If you just want to know what's coming up, up next with us, uh, then uh, on April um, 22nd, we're doing our in-person conference in New York City at the rooftop of the World Trade Center. In mid-June, we're doing our uh, um, uh, UAE conference, a major event of several days with some of the world's most prominent uh, uh, families. Um, so check that out. Um, our next session is gonna be on uh, February 2nd, which is next week. Uh, I believe it is a Tuesday with an Israeli tech company that basically uh, uses AI to control pain management. Um, and uh, that, that is something used in hospitals. They're already selling, very interesting company. and. Uh, uh, a very exciting story. So thank you everybody for being with me today. Thank you and see you later on. Thanks a lot.